Superman. Henry Cavill is out. He's out. Oh, say it isn't so, man. It is. Henry Cavill's not Superman anymore. And it, yeah. Oh, man, it bums me out. Uh, welcome to Mirror Domains Movie News, guys. Uh, this is a live news show for movie fans where we talk about all the trending movie news headlines of the day. It's uh, Avatar 2 Day. Yay. We're going to go see Avatar The Way of Water today. And pay attention to the channel later on for my straight out of the theater reaction for that for sure. I think I am going to go see it in the 3D version. I'm going to put those glasses over these glasses and I'll, because I need to be able to tell you guys if the 3D is worth it or not. I think that's why I'm going to see it. Uh, Indiana Jones 5, is it going to have a uh, different ending? Um, well, John Williams seems to think so. Uh, John Wick 4, we got a new image. Uh, Sandman Season 2, uh, we're going to be talking about. Uh, Sean Levy Star Wars maybe maybe who knows but guys it's hard to talk about not to talk about the big headlines that dropped yesterday uh, with the announcement that Henry Cavill is no longer going to be our Superman and uh, Henry Cavill is out and the fans have started to react to the news that Henry Cavill will not return for Plant Superman reboot um, and this is just something that hit me last night so it, it came across my desk like around, what was it, 9, 9.30. And I was kind of like, I'm, I'm going to turn on the camera and i got to talk about it. So I talked about it for like an hour already yesterday. Uh, and we'll rehash some of it here today in case you guys also want to get out some of your frustrations with this. Because uh, from the announcement uh, that Cavill made on his Instagram, he said that the studios told him that that it was okay for him to say that he's going to come back as Superman. And that's why we saw him film those scenes at the end of Black Adam. And then now James Gunn comes in and says, no, we're not doing that anymore. So it's kind of like, it was a slap to the face. It was, for me. It was like a punch in the gut from James Gunn, and especially since I went to bat. It felt like I went to bat for him and for his defense uh, with the Patty Jenkins situation with um, Wonder Woman. But people are angry understandably you know that's going to happen the, ha the hashtag fire james gunn restore the snyderverse bring back Zack snyder well guys as much as you want to have that happen it's not going to happen it's not they're going to go forward with this unless for some reason <laughs> the first movie completely bombs <laughs> and then uh zad's laugh there will go whoops Maybe we shouldn't have given so much control for uh, James Gunn. It says uh, it doesn't make sense because for me, um, you know, it was it would have been so easy for them. Okay, all right, I get it. I understand. You want to wipe the slate clean, which is fine. You don't want to confuse people with um, the idea that Henry Cavill is going to be the next Superman. Fine, but you can still have made one final movie or so to tie up all those loose ends and for us to kind of like say, okay, goodbye. This is going to be the passing of the torch to the next iteration, the next phase of this, where we won't be having Henry Cavill as Superman. We will be going to a younger version because it just sounds like, it feels like you've done him dirty. That's what it does. That's what it feels like, right? Um, and, uh, and that's echoed by what a lot of people are saying out there. Warner Bros. is the most idiotic company of the entertainment. You literally had an actor who looks like and can act like most comic accurate Superman and you literally wasted him. You can't make this up. Yeah. And uh, I've just begun the preliminary hunt of somebody who could pick up that mantle of the 20 year old Superman that uh, they claim that they want. Um, so uh, Let's just see what some other people are saying here. Absolute BS. Remember the power of the fans, guys. Yeah, so uh, I said that yesterday too. Uh, guys, if you really are really upset about this, just don't go see his movie. Don't pay a dime to go see the next Superman. And you you let the studios know what you want by your wallet. That's that's the best way that you can you, you tell them, you talk with them, you interact with them. So don't go see it if you don't want to see it. Now, I'm somebody who also said in my stream yesterday, as butthurt as we are about this, as soon as we get wind of who they've cast, um, we get what the new costume is going to look like and stuff, I'm sure most of us Superman fans will be back right on board with it. I think most of us will. 
And the casual fans out there, they don't care about this. They probably don't even know about this. They're still happy that it's Avatar 2 Day. Um, so let's go back and rehash just a little bit of what transpired last night, where this all came out. Because it was announced that James Gunn is writing a new Superman movie that's going to focus in on his younger days. Uh, at uh, It's not going to be an origin story, he said, but it's going to focus in on his younger age. Um, though Superman will be on the younger side, he won't be living in Smallville, but rather will be at the Daily Planet uh, as a reporter, Clark Kent, according to insiders. This news may be a surprise to fans who expected Cavill to return as Superman in the near future. Near future, Cavill appeared in post credit scenes in Black Adam. Yeah, what does that mean? Uh, what the heck does that mean? Uh... He announced earlier in the year, yeah, I will, after all, not be returning as Superman. Yeah. Ah, and uh, we, we talked about that in length, that uh, how much that sucks. How much that sucks, right? So I'll just reiterate the quote there that Cavill said, this is not the easiest news. Um, and it's not. And he took it like a true mensch. He took it like a gentleman. He took it like, uh, you know, the way you're supposed to, right? Uh, I had... I just had a meeting with James Gunn and Peter Safran, and it's sad news, everyone. I will, after all, not be returning as Superman after being told the studio to announce my return back in October. Yeah, so there you go. After being told by the studio to announce my return back in October prior to their hire, this news isn't the easiest, but that's life. The changing of the guard is something that happens. I respect that. James and Peter have a universe to build. I wish them and all involved. In the new universe, the best of luck and the happiest of futures. So you know, that's the class act that Henry Cavill is, right? He's just saying, okay, it's done. I wish you all the best. See you. But that's not the way that James Gunn uh, wants things, right? And then he says, he just thanks the fans for for all those who've say, uh, who have been by my side through the years. Uh, we can mourn for a bit, and I think more people will be mourning for just a bit here. A lot of people are going to be taking this and running with it um, for sure. But... Uh, we must remember Superman is still around. Everything we, he stands for still exists. So he's trying to inspire us, guys. Even on his way out, he's trying to be, he's still Superman. He's trying to inspire us. And he still inspire us. Everything he stands for still exists. And the example he sets for us are still there. My turn to where the cape has passed, but what Superman stands for will never will. Uh, it's been a fun ride with you all and onwards and upwards. So class act from Henry Cavill all the way. True, true class act. And man, it sucks. Because you've seen that he was told by the studios, hey, I'm back as Superman. Look forward to us. And you saw the quotes before where he's like, I can't wait to bring a new, uh, happier version of Superman to you guys, one that inspires everybody. I can't wait to do that for you guys. They had the post credit scene at the end of Black Adam that suggested that Black Adam is going to fight Superman at some point. Now it doesn't seem like we're going to see that at all. And it would just, it would not make sense now for Dwayne Johnson's Black Adam to fight this younger Superman. It just doesn't make sense. All he had to do was one final movie and to tie this all up. Maybe they can still do that with the Flash movie and still like put in a few post credit scenes just to tie up all the loose ends. But it seems like the reports are true and it kind of corroborates everything that Patty Jenkins said the other day. That there just wasn't the option. Like, she didn't walk away from Wonder Woman. It's just just like Henry Cavill. He didn't walk away from it. It just was taken away from him. It was taken away from him by James Gunn. And uh, for a lot of people, the uh, fan base out there will be kind of like, yeah, they want heads to roll. Because that's not what we want. We want... We want... Henry Cavill is Superman, and he's only thirty nine, guys. He's just—he's going to be forty. But the ten there's the this ten year plan by uh, by James Gunn and Peter Safran. This ten year plan, he he can still play that for ten years, and he would only be like fifty near the end of that plan. Why can't he do that, James Gunn? Why do you have to take it back to the um, to his twenties? Like, we don't need an origin story anymore. And he says that it's not going to be. So then what's the big deal? We didn't really get to see a whole lot of Henry Cavill working at the Daily Planet. But 
We got to forge on, guys. And what does that mean? So a few good things, I suppose, that we can take away from it. I think fans would have accepted Henry Cavill moving forward. But you obviously get a chance to have a new Lois Lane. We get a new Lex Luthor, for sure. We would have a new Zod, a different Zod. Which is going to be weird that you're going to see that Zod in the Flash movie. It's just so goddamn stupid. Oh. And it almost renders the rest of the movies pointless. Like, why do we need to see Aquaman 2 now? James Wan must be, like, pulling his hair out, saying, Oh, God, Shazam! Fury of the Gods was supposed to come out this December, guys. It was supposed to be out this Christmas. What's the point in seeing that anymore? Zachary Levi is out as... Um, as Shazam, because Shazam's uh, wizards and stuff are tied to Black Adam. It's part of that universe, guys. It's just, and then you could say, well, no, they didn't really show them in there. But Jaiman Hansu's character was in Black Adam, so it's kind of like, it is. It is tied. And you say, well, no, it's not. Casual fans won't know it, but we know it. And we drive the machine here because we're the movie fans. Uh, we tell our friends about what's going on in the in the movies and the upcoming movies. And we say, oh, you want to check out this movie for sure because, um, you know, I saw online that the trailer looked awesome. And the casual fans will say, oh, well, he's my friend. I'll trust him what he says. So let's go check out The Whale. Let's go check out uh, everything everywhere all at once. So let's go check out The Glass Onion kind of thing, right? Uh, let's go see, uh, well, Avatar is kind of big enough that the casual fans know that it's coming. But, uh, you know, it's just... It, It doesn't seem like this is the right way. Like, they dropped the ball on how to handle and approach all this. They should not have announced that they were meeting with Zaslav this week to lay out this plan. If they've had the plan, like, all of this should be behind the scenes right now. None of us sh should know all of this right now. Uh, this should all become clear when they announce the slate. Like, I want to know what movie's coming out first, which is obviously going to be the Superman movie written by... Uh, James Gunn, and then probably a Wonder Woman or a new Aquaman, and then we'll slowly drive towards the Justice League movie. Uh, I think that's the direction that they're going to go. Uh, and it's just, it doesn't s seem right because we just heard that, yes, Cavill was going to come back, right? And now he's not. So Cavill, he... he He's going to be fine because he's got um, the Highlander reboot coming up. He's got um, probably more Sherlock Holmes bits to do with uh, Enola Holmes and stuff like that. He's going to be fine. He's going to be in demand uh, for sure. Because he, he seems like he's a good dude overall. People like to hang out with him. People want to work with him. So maybe, maybe this even, like... Does it open the door for him to be Bond now? I don't know. It just sucks, man. Um, yeah, no one can top this. Thank God we witnessed it from Snyder Cut. Um, the black Superman. Uh, people are just oh, paying their tributes that we get to see. Um, the black suit Superman. Yeah. Henry Cavill. Um... Don't you know what you want to see on these? No, I, I no. And oh yeah, that means we also get a new uh, Jared Leto Joker and uh, the Suicide Squad, right? Because um, the Suicide Squad, then James Gunn, I'm sure he's going to bend over backwards to make sure that these guys still stick around. Peacemaker takes place in that universe, and we hear that they want to make another installment with Idris Elba down the line with that character. So he's going to bend over backwards for himself and his own properties, but he won't do it for Henry Cavill. Oh man, what a what a complete, complete s show. You know what I'm talking about. Um, my God, yeah. Um, I, I well, and talking about the Suicide Squad, that also means that if they're not going to go forward with that, that that's pretty much the nail in the coffin for. Uh, Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn. We're probably done seeing her. 
And we're going to see Lady Gaga's version of it, but we probably won't see this type of Harley. We won't see Mar uh, Lady Gaga as this type of a Harley Quinn. We won't. Um, God, you guys, you've really screwed this up. You really did. Uh, so badly. And, and you say, well, James, you, you just haven't seen the plan yet. You don't know what the plan is. Um, but the details that we've heard coming out doesn't sound like you've had that much of a plan. And for some reason, some of the other things that are still on the table it just don't make sense. Like the J.J. Abrams Black Superman movie um, that doesn't use the Val Sod storyline. It uses, they just want to make um, Clark Kent black. That's all they want to do. They're not going to use the, the storylines from the comics, but that's still on the table, apparently. You didn't ask that, Zaslav? Like, I would trump whatever James Gunn wants to do and say, no, this project from J.J. Abrams is not happening, is done. You can't give us a Henry Cavill movie, but you're going to give us this. And I'm not getting angry because it's just because they want to try something new, but I'm getting angry because you're not using the storylines, J.J. Abrams, like the Val Zod storyline, because there does make sense for this to happen. But you're just, you're just doing it for moronic reasons because you don't understand the characters, J.J. Abrams. You don't understand. You're a moron. Get out of my face. There you go. Uh, I'm done with that. Um, enough of that. Um, that's still on the table. Out of all this mess, that movie's still on the table? <sighs> Jesus. Um, and then there was tops, tops of... Talks, sorry. Of maybe like a, a Richard Donner style reboot that people were talking about yesterday. No, that's not going to happen. Um, that's not going to happen. Um, it just kind of makes me want to go back to what people are saying here on on just venting because that's what you have to do, right? And Cavill said it yourself. You got to mourn. Um, it'll be I'll be sad for a while, but I'll do my best to trust trust the process. Not when you start to hear the details coming out, right? The S stands for Cavill should still be Superman, and he's still good. And then why can't you? Why can't you? If, if you're going to, like, from the reports, the Batman, Matt Reeves Batman, is still going to be safe, guys. That's going to be on its own separate universe. So why can't Henry Cavill have his own Superman movies in its own separate universe? You know why? Because those Superman movies would probably do better than whatever it is uh, James Gunn's writing. Because people just don't want to see it. People don't want to see it. Know your audience, they say. Know what your audience wants. And they say, well, there's going to be people and pundits out there today that will be saying, well, no, you got to let the artists create their own thing first. Not when it comes to, like, that's one of the things about, even about YouTube, guys, here, they tell you, know your audience, know who you're talking to, uh, because you're making products for them. And people wanted to see a, more Henry Cavill Superman, and you chose, you chose not to give us that. Because you can very easily still tell stories of him working at the Daily Planet. You still can. Why does he have to be younger? De-age him then. De-age him. Push technology then. De-age him if you feel like he has to be. But why can't he be our Superman? That doesn't make sense. It just... <sighs> but as I said yesterday, um, we'll get over it. And when we start to hear who's going to be cast, I'm sure there'll be an uproar. They'll be say, well, he's not as good as Henry Cavill. He, he won't be as charismatic. And if they really fumbled the ball with the casting, for sure, then yeah, um, people will be like, um, I'm not on board with it. I don't care. Uh, but this, as far as the Snyderverse goes, guys, it's official. With a bullet, um, the Snyderverse is officially dead officially dead and um black adam seems like that'll be that'll be gone um gal gadot and yeah i thought they would want to work with her before but no and then james gunn's quote saying that we had a great meeting with henry cavill <laughs> a great meeting and it's like by the sounds of cavill's quote he said like oh thanks guys i wish you all the best i'm out uh, and then they talked about uh Ben Affleck, he's he's done as Batman. He's done. Uh, but they want him to direct. They want him to direct a DC project. So I guess it doesn't really matter what happens with the Flash movie. It's almost pointless. You don't need to watch the Flash anymore. Um, 
Because it's not going to have any consequence to anything. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm looking at this image and it sucks. Um, Aquaman 2, you don't really need, like, why, why do I need to watch Aquaman 2 anymore? Huh. All right. Let's try to move on from this, guys. You see me rant about it. Let's continue on. What's on my slate here? Uh, James Gunn. Yeah. Um, and Shazam. Uh, what is this? Is this is this the state of the DCEU? Yeah, let's let's, let's go with that. Um, why Shazam family is a silly name in Fury of the Gods? Well, I guess it doesn't really matter anymore, right? Because this is not going to be the Shazam going forward. And I know they can bend and tweak it to bring it in and still be the Shazam, but I was looking forward to seeing them fight with Superman against Black Adam. We're not going to get that. I don't know why they can't give us that. Why can't you just announce that we're going to get a Shazam versus Black Adam, a Shazam Superman versus Black Adam movie with Henry Cavill? Just give us that. Close off the Shazam storyline like that for the third one. Do that. Shazam, Zachary Levi had his run there for three films. and Do that. And then you would get closure with Dwayne Johnson's Black Adam. I think that's the way to go. That's, that's the way I would have done it, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, Our Glass Viking says that would be an amazing stroke of good fortune if stars aligned for Henry to play James Bond. He would be an awesome 007. Yeah, it would be. And if I were Barbara Broccoli, uh, I'd be on the phone with Henry Cavill today <laughs> saying, let's talk Bond. Let's let's talk Bond. Um, let's get it going. Because as much as people still kind of pray that Henry Cavill would go back for um, The Witcher, <laughs> Guys, they already offered the contract to Liam Hemsworth. And I said that yesterday too, right? It was like, well, now that he's out for Superman, he he didn't he left Witcher so that he could have time to do more Superman projects. And now he's not going to be Superman. That sucks for him. It just sucks. It's it's hard to think that. It, no, he did Henry Cavill dirty. They did. Um because people like him as Geralt, right? He can't go back to that. He can't go back simply because uh it's already offered to Liam Hemsworth. Are, are you telling me Henry Cavill dropped The Witcher to come back as Superman only to be dropped as Superman? That's precisely what happened. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, I'm done with all you, dog. Y'all cost him The Witcher for what? For what? Yeah, so people are upset. People are going to be raging about this all today. It's going to be talk of the town for the weekend. Maybe Avatar and its brilliance will be able to shine through somewhat. but. Uh, the state of the DCU moving forward is, it's all in peril. It's all up in the air. Um, James Gunn's DCU looking for directing project for Ben Affleck. Could he come back? Like, we know that he wrote a, he did write a Batman movie that was going to be against Deathstroke, right? So maybe they could use that script for their version of Batman, of their version of the upcoming Batman, which isn't going to be Pattinson. Uh, that came out too. That is, it's not going to be the pants and Batman. So that's going to be in its own separate universe. Same with the Joker. That Joker is going to be in its own separate universe. So then why still can't you just give us more Henry Cavill Superman? I just don't. <sighs> and I don't know if uh, Affleck will be up for that. Uh, it was offered to him. There was no statement from Affleck just yet. Guys, it's going to be like the state of the DCU is going to be just in flux. Until they get until the new year when they announce their slate. You know how Marvel comes out with their their Phase Four and they show all the movies on that timeline. DC needs to do that and they need to do that quickly. So I'm expecting hopefully in January that slate comes out and we know what's going to happen. We sh so we can start to anticipate. Right. Met with Ben yesterday precisely because he wants to direct and we want him to direct. We just have to find the right project. Well, I think it would be awesome if he was a Batman. As far as him starring in something else, like as, as another character, no. No. I mean, what else is on the table? The Flash, not really interested anymore. Aquaman 2, meh. Blue Beetle, yeah, Blue Beetle was still in, that, that's, oof. That's going to be probably in its own separate old universe too. Uh, and what does it mean for all the TV shows, guys? The Flash uh, season nine tra trailer came out yesterday. I watched it. Um. So this Flash will get its 
get his uh, TV show ending, and then things will start to wrap up, right? Because um, it's not... People were saying, well, why can't he be the Flash in the movies going forward? Because, well, movies and TV are a little bit different. But uh, it is what it is. It, it, it's just... I, I'm curious to know what you guys think about all of this stuff. We've talked about it in length here for quite a bit now, for too long. And uh, I've had an hour and a half of content of talking about all this stuff. As more information comes out, we'll definitely talk about it. Um, for me, it's kind of like... It bums me out. It it, it really does. It's Because it doesn't have to go down like this. It doesn't have to be this way. People know. People will know. And yeah, exactly. Derpy there in the live chat says, uh, uh, I'm glad it's a full reboot. So as I said, it does open the doors for like, we get a new Lex Luthor. We get, we'll get new Zod. We'll get new um, Batman and everything. Right. And it's just up in the air as to who are going to, who's going to be the new Superman. And I do like to entertain those ideas, but I was looking through it through yesterday and I was looking for like, I, I, I watched trailers now for like, could this person be the Superman? Uh, we just watched a trailer for Valhalla, Vikings Valhalla season two, and uh, this guy came up in the trailer. And I'm like, well, imagine him without the beard. Well, okay, well, maybe maybe he can't be a Superman, but could he be um, an Aquaman maybe? Because you, you, you look for the jaw lines, right? Because uh, they wanted a 20-something guy to play Superman. Uh, Cavill is 39. You have to go young if you want a legit universe. Why? Why? They can use de-aging. If they really, really need him to be younger for two or three films, they could de-age him. That's not a big issue. That's what technology is all about. Of course, the envelope. Why not? Uh, but yeah, so I'm keeping my eye out for people in trailers and such to who who could be the new Wonder Woman. Who could be uh, Aquaman? Actually, she kind of looks like a Wonder Woman, right? Who's this Laura Berlin? It's going to be hard, man. Um, or she's 32, so she's a little bit older. So that couldn't be. Because you'd be looking for people around that age range. Uh, I think somebody, Arglass, you said Ansel Elgort. But I don't know about that, because Ansel has kind of got, he's got some baggage with him right now. Um, I was hoping that he would have been Han Solo, but uh, since those accusations came out about his treatment of some actresses, I just, uh, Ansel Elgort is kind of like, uh, 28 years old, he'd be on the older end of the spectrum that you'd be looking at because they would have to pull the trigger pretty fast. Um, and I'm not really looking at actresses, actors for like their physique because they, they can bulk up, right? Ah, it is what it is. We'll, I'll keep, I'll be keeping my eye open for sure now on all the TV series that we watch and all the movies that I watch. I'll be looking for younger actors, uh, Dr. Montgomery. Yeah, I saw that name pitch too. Uh, uh, from um, uh, from Stranger Things, I think he's on the older side too, right? Um, uh, Twenty eight. So yeah, he's he's a, he's a little bit on the older side. So you got to remember, it's probably going to be like at least a year before they would even be shooting this, and that's an optimistic appraisal. Um, so he'd be twenty nine, maybe, maybe. He could be. Um, he's got the jawline for it. Um, it's a pick. It's just one of those things where you just got to keep your eye out now. Who could be? And if not, he could be. He could be an Aquaman. He could be a Flash. Uh, you look at the Stranger Things cast too. Charlie Heaton, no. Uh, Joe Kerry, no. Austin Butler, no. <laughs> no, but that, yeah, you're looking for that kind of age range, right? You're looking for it. So if they started, let's say at the optimistic, that the best, they would start shooting the new Superman in um, 2024 for a late 2025 release. So you want, you want an actor around 23-ish, so they'd be 25, 26 by the time the premieres come out and stuff like that. And then you just steamroll it, man. You green light, you shoot Superman 2 and 3 back to back. You shoot Wonder Woman and the sequels all back to back, you know that your projects can be grouped together like that then because you're driving towards that Justice League movie. And hopefully they do a really good job of 
dark side. I know that the Snyder Cut didn't have the time to really do him well, but I, I, dark side, yeah, they need to get that nailed down. All right, we talked about this for half an hour. <laughs> Let's move on because it is uh, it is Avatar Day, guys. It is Avatar Day, and I'm seeing it in just over three and a half hours. But did you know that if you go into the IMAX screenings, uh, you go get a, an IMAX screening uh, debut trailer for Oppenheimer. So, uh, yeah, you get a trailer uh, for the new Christopher Nolan film, Gillian Murphy, um, on the uh, IMAX releases for Avatar The Way of Water. So you'll see the, uh, the trailer for Oppenheimer. That's cool. And on top of that, you know that uh, the other day we talked about if you go to see it in IMAX, you'll see a sneak peek at Mission Impossible uh, 7. Um, like a behind the scenes of them doing a stunt. I think it's the motorcycle stunt, right? Yeah, it's them doing the motorcycle stunt. So you'll, you'll see a, a sneak peek of that on the IMAX screenings. I could go see an IMAX screening, but it's kind of really bad weather out there today. And you'll see that when I get out of my straight out of the theater reaction and my preview of going there. You'll see that. Um, but Oppenheimer trailer, IMAX on Avatar. Let's talk about Avatar 2 day. Guys, it is Avatar. Uh... James Cameron says Avatar The Way of Water does more for female empowerment than Wonder Woman or Captain Marvel. Wow, that's quite the boast. Actually, it's not much of a boast from Captain Marvel. They kind of, I don't know. They took the arrogant approach with the Captain Marvel empowerment, and I didn't like that. I did like what they did with Wonder Woman, though, and so much that I have a poster of her on my wall. Um, but that comes out today. I guess maybe I'm sort of starting to get a little bit hyped. But <laughs> only three and a half hours away. Uh, let's see what he said here. James Cameron's been making a lot of weird quotes too lately, especially about the MCU and comic book movies. Uh, everybody's always talking about female empowerment, but what is such a great part of a woman's life what we as men don't experience? And I thought, well, if you're going to really... If you're really going to go all the way down the rabbit hole of female empowerment, let's have a female warrior who's six months pregnant in battle. What? What? What does that have to do with anything? Yeah, because Natiri is going to be pregnant in this one, right? Um, Derby says he's seeing Avatar at 725. Cool, man. Are you seeing it in the IMAX? Are you going to see it in the uh, high frame rate? Uh, I think, no, I, I'm seeing it in 3D, but I'm not seeing it in the high frame rate. Yeah, I'll be seeing it in the 3D because I want to be able to report if the 3D worked or not. I was going to go see it in 2D, which is the way that I would have preferred to see it, but uh, I'm going to see it in 3D just to satisfy uh, my curiosities. Okay, it doesn't happen in our society, probably hasn't happened in hundreds of years, but I guarantee you back in the day, women had to fight for survival and protect their children. What the heck are you talking about? And it didn't matter if they were pregnant. Have you not seen Apocalypto? James Cameron, you almost sound like what um, Jennifer Lawrence did the other day, saying that there was no other s female uh, action stars before um, Hunger Games. No, James, what Cameron, what the heck are you talking about? You yourself, but uh, what, what, what does it? Why does she have to be pregnant to be empowered? I don't understand that. That's kind of like you not understanding what women are all about. That's not what gives women power. The fact that they can get pregnant and remake a, a life. It's just, that's like me saying that I'm empowered because I've got human, I got male junk. That's like, what? What? No, it's about what you do up here, man, that makes you empowered. It's how you conduct yourself. It's not your body parts. Jesus, H crackers. It's not like, I mean, it's not like ah, your biology. It's like what you do, right? Ugh. Like, let's take the boundaries off. To me, it was the last bastion you don't see. Wonder Woman and Captain Marvel. All these other amazing women come up, but they're not moms. And they're not pregnant while they're fighting evil. And I, I think he's kind of missed the mark with this one, too. Um, by his opinion, a woman has to be impregnant, has to be pregnant to be empowered. That's basically what you're trying to say. And if you say that, that's, that's not a good thing to say about women. Then you're saying the women that aren't pregnant don't have power. That's just stupid. <laughs> Cameron, my God, man. Let's get that off the screen quickly. 
<laughs> James, um, I don't have IMAX around me, unfortunately. Derpy says, um, but I got a XD Cinema. Okay, which isn't too bad, but not the same experience though. That's fine. I got really different types of. I got like VIP theaters. I got um, AVX theaters. I got D box theaters. I got IMAX theaters. Uh. I don't think he's saying that. A Weaver says, you don't think that he's saying that, that a woman has to be pregnant to be empowered? Uh, well, how else would you read that? And the pregnant women are more capable of a lot more athletic than we as a culture acknowledge. He seems to be hung up on this pregnant thing, though. That's just kind of like, I don't know if that's the right message. I mean... Yeah, I just um, for me, I'm just thinking about Apocalypto. My God. All right. Well, anyway, <laughs> there is another uh, James Cameron uh, Avatar headline here. Um, could Avatar 2 fly higher than Top Gun in the Best Picture Oscar race? So they think, well, not automatically Avatar is going to get nominated for Best Picture. It probably will. Just because of popularity, regardless of how good it is. Um, I don't know. I'm hoping Top Gun Maverick will get a Best Picture nom. I don't expect either of those to win Best Picture, though. It usually goes to a smaller indie film. For some god awful reason, it'll probably go to Bones and All. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, a Weaver says, uh, yeah, just showing a pregnant woman in action doesn't invalidate the non pregnant. He just always sounds, he just always sounds pompous. Um, <laughs> uh, about Cameron. Yeah. Uh, he's trying to just say that, yeah, it's it's a good thing that women get pregnant. Like, that's what he's trying to say. Which is okay. That's how our species reproduces. I understand that. <laughs> he just, I don't know. <laughs> he's, he's not very good at making statements about movies. Uh, our Glass Viking says, uh, yeah, but a lot more people identify as a woman, so he's opening up a can of cancel. I don't know. <sighs> it's just a weird quote. I know what he's trying to do. He's just trying to say that, hey, this movie's going to be about women empowerment too. And don't discount our women here, our, our Nateri, because she's going to be pregnant in, in it. Uh, she's empowered just as much as the other women. That's what he's trying to say. That's all he's trying to say. But for me, it's just kind of like, why do you need to say it like that? In fact, why do you have to bring up that she's pregnant at all? Apocalypto chick wasn't a warrior. She was rescued. Well, she gave birth in that hole, though, all by herself, drowning with her neck up into water like this. And then she used the ants to close the wound on her son's um, cut, right? So she knows the ways. And I'm sure that these women of these tribes will know the ways, too. Um, Just weird. <laughs> it's just weird. Actually, uh, I didn't pull up the uh, Rotten Tomatoes because we should get some audience score right now, right, for this Avatar Rotten Tomatoes. Let's pull up that. And because um, he's pompous. Am I? <laughs> James Cameron, yeah. All right, let's see. Some audience scores? No. So it's come down a little bit, 82%. Was it 83% yesterday? 82%? Yeah, but this will be where I think the audience scores, regardless of how good the film is, like if it, like it, let's say that the story is terrible, it's still going to be a high audience score. Uh, I don't expect the story to be terrible. I just expect it to be long, long. Um, what is it? It just doesn't for me. It just doesn't have. Hmm. It's not like the next Avengers movie where you're feeling like, yeah, I want to check that out. It's not like a Star Wars movie where you're just like, yeah. I want to see, them. wow, guys, you got to check this out kind of thing. It's not like that. Um, I'm, I'm just not feeling that excitement for it. But I'm going to check it out later today, guys. I'm checking it out in just over three hours. So there you go. Uh, what else can you find here on Mirror Domains? Uh, if you like this kind of content, we do a live movie news show daily, 11 a.m. Eastern, Monday to Friday, guys, here on the channel. And uh, we do full series watch-alongs for things like uh, The Peripheral. Uh, we uh, watched episode 5 yesterday. Today, at 1pm, we'll be watching episode 6. Um, because 
I only have time for one episode today. We'll be watching episode six because I'll be running out to watch Avatar after that. And then, uh, hey, if we like those kinds of things, we watched Wednesday, a full series. All eight episodes are up on a playlist for you guys. General Ortega knocked it out of the park. And on uh, tomorrow, guys, 1 p.m., we'll be watching <laughs> Moonfall. Uh, yeah, that uh, Roland Emmerich film. <laughs> so pay attention for that. Uh, I, I can't wait to see it. Uh, we'll roast it, maybe. And we have a full reaction up for Mortal Kombat, RR&R, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Oh, that one was brilliant. That one was, ooh, uh, that's going to be in my top 10 for sure. Same with R&R, R&R. Uh, we do Horror Weekly Roundup and talk about all the horror movie news headlines. And, of course, then you know that uh, we do uh, movie news here. Look how drab the Superman costume looks there. Like, that's, that's, that's drab. Ah. Uh, it just echoes our feelings for today, right? It does. And on top of that, we do trailer reactions, um, movie reviews. Hey, if you like the trailer reactions too, kind of bundled all together, bundled, uh, watch the pre-shows, the movie news pre-shows. Uh, if there's trailers out, we watch the, those trailers on the pre-show and you guys can check out my trailer reactions for uh, things like the Vikings Valhalla, for the whale, those kinds of things. Um, Spider-Man and Across the Spider-Verse. It's all on the pre-show, so go check that out. And if it's big, like Scream, then I, I separate them. All right, let's get back into the movie news. Where are we at? Um, Indiana Jones 5 comes out next year, guys. And apparently, according to John Williams, they're filming another ending? What? Indiana Jones 5 is currently shooting a new ending. Um, Really? Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny could be getting a new or even multiple endings. Well, I thought, you know, they might film all, multiple endings just in case, you know, just to throw people off the scent as to what it was going to be filming. But it sounds like the composer, John Williams, kind of let this out of the bag. Um, I guess he was uh, saying this um, about the sequel here. Williams recently appeared in Italy to tease his score for the Indiana Jones sequel, and he revealed that filming was still underway, stating that production has another ending to shoot. See what John Williams said below. All right, what did he say? Uh, so we have just completed the film. We maybe have another ending to shoot and to record maybe in a couple of weeks. Maybe. Maybe seems to be the key word there. That doesn't seem to be a definitive. Maybe. Um, now, guys, of course, if the sensationalists out there will say, oh, Indiana Jones 5, is people didn't like the ending. It's going to be terrible. They had to go back and reshoot it. No, not necessarily. Maybe it's just a tweak here and there. They got a, they, they just realized, you know, it would be better if we did a little bit like this instead. That's it. That's the way that I read it. But I know people will be wanting to spin that to say that it's in trouble, that it's not landing right. And no, it's not. Guys, I'm sure it happens all the time. It, I'm sure it does. Our Glass Viking says, uh, oh, that's always a good sign. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Our Glass Viking says, I wonder, do they test screen all alternate endings? I don't know. Um, I know that they do change the endings based on test screenings. They do, do, they do make changes after test screenings, for sure. Uh, it happens quite a bit, actually. So this doesn't really... It doesn't really matter. I, I still think that we're in fine hands with James Mangold. I like the trailer for it, and uh, it is what it is. It's good to see John Williams up and about, too. God, the guy's like, he's like 93 or something, right? For God's sakes. Cool. And I think that's going to be his last score, right? That's going to be the last uh, film score that he works on. Yeah, that's what I thought. Dead or alive versions. Or maybe that could be. Maybe in one version, they do kill off Indiana Jones. I don't think they need to do that, though. <clears throat> Just make him run up right off into the sunset. That's the way I would like it. Why not? All right. That's what you need to know from that headline, guys. John Wick 4 comes out next year, too, guys. And we got a new image. John Wick 4, Chapter 4, sees the hitman come to terms with what he does in new image released. Okay, so if this is the new image, what the heck are you talking about? <laughs> he comes to terms. What? Uh, in John Wick 4, I would say John comes to terms on how he does affects people that he cares about. 
there's always got to be consequences for your actions. And in this, we're starting to see that John understands what the consequences are. Not that it curbs him in any way. Well, it shouldn't. So that's the new image? What the heck are you talking about? He sees the error of his ways? He's just walking with two guys after him or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm still looking for... Guys, That talking about good trailers. John Wick 4, Chapter, chapter 4 was an awesome trailer. Donnie Yen, I'm looking forward to it, man. Uh, the stunt work in it looks phenomenal. Uh, yeah. All right. So, new image. Not too much there to talk about. Sandman, Season 2. Sandman, Season 2. Guys, I was late to the party for Sandman. Um, I binged it. Within like four days, I think. Um, but Sandman episodes could be split into two parts like Stranger Things Season 4. I don't, well, you know what? The first Sandman season was kind of like that anyway, a little bit. Because it... Like the first half of the season was about him getting his powers back. And then the second part was about the Vortex, right? And I much preferred the story about the Vortex. Um, but yeah, if you split things up, like, um, you know how Stranger Things season four kind of put like first half, well, first six, was it, no, it was first seven episodes out a month before. And then a month later, the last two episodes dropped. If they did that with Sandman, I, I would be on board for that. Uh, I'm looking forward to Sandman because that guy did a great job. He did a good job playing the dream. Whatever heck his name is. <laughs> uh, he did a good job. And I like that style towards the end of him, you know, being questioned. You can help these people. Why don't you help these people? Because that's not really what he does, but he can. And he does sometimes, you know, question his morals. Could he? No, he can't be Superman. <laughs> he doesn't have the. No, 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 no. But yeah, that's kind of my where my brain is going. It's like, <laughs> uh, could it possibly be? I don't know. But if they did the Sandman season two like that, I'll be looking forward to it. And we will be doing full live watch alongs for Sandman season two for sure. Uh, a Weaver says placed uh, on a grave test audience booze. Yeah, placed on a grave test audience booze. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about Sean Levy Star Wars. Um, Sean Levy Star Wars movie gets optimistic update from director. Okay, cool. Well, he said that he would be open for this. Um, let's see uh, what this article says. Uh, basically, it just says that he uh, he is a big fan of uh, Star Wars. Um, that he's working with Deadpool and stuff like that. We know that he's doing Deadpool 3, right? We talked about that in length. It's not to the very bottom of the article where we get into the Star Wars stuff. I've been talking with Kathy Kennedy for a while now, and she's aware of my passion for this franchise for a long time. The stars have aligned, and she came to me and was like, let's do something here. And that's as much as I can say. But this is definitely uh, in development and not yet close to prep. So there's a lot of work to be done. So it almost sounds like they, they're greenlighting it. And you know how well he works with um, Ryan Reynolds. So could you see Ryan Reynolds perhaps pick up a lightsaber? This was from the Adam Project that came out this year. And I was looking at this image. Sean Levy does work very well with uh, Ryan Reynolds because he did that and he did, uh, oh, what was that? Good Guy movie? Free Guy, right, Free Guy. Uh, and then they're working together on... Uh, Deadpool, but he could, I could see him as a Star Wars. I, I feel like that's good. So he had talks with Kathy Kennedy. <laughs> now take that with a grain of salt too, that you heard reports that Kathleen Kennedy's on her way out. So maybe they'll, they'll have to sign something quickly to make sure that, uh, well, <laughs> there's so many people. It's like a revolving door of directors for Star Wars projects, but I'd be up for a Sean Levy Star Wars. I would be, because you know that he's passionate about it. And he pays respects to it. And uh, why not get added to the pantheon of directors? So it sounds like something's on the table for him, for sure. And then, of course, people will speculate. What could it be about? Could it be about Ray? Could it be in episode 10? No. I think they're going to leave episode 10 for a while. 
for goddamn. You know what needs a reboot? <laughs> you know what universe needs a reboot is Star Wars. Reboot Star Wars. And I don't mean from episode one or episode four and five. Like just start something new, fresh. Yes, use forced users, but don't use like Coruscant or anything that we knew. Like don't use Jedi or anything or Sith. Like recreate it all kind of thing. That's what I would say. Now, our glass Viking says the new Superman is faster than speeding bullet. You won't see him coming. Yeah. The Adam project was foreshadowing for sure. Brian as a Jedi would be cool. It would. Um, it would be cool. But you know what also would be cool? He can play mean very well. He can play a bad guy too. Imagine him being a Sith Lord. Oh, like Darth. Maybe a Darth Bane. Oh my God. That would be awesome. Because when he turns on his intensity, I'm thinking about his intensity. He's great. And it just reminded me of one of my favorite scenes of the year of him in the Adam project there, when he drives away from his family in the, in the Jeep. Hmm. Powerful stuff. Ryan Reynolds is a really good actor. He really is. Okay. This is something that's come up and I mentioned this the other day too. So I, uh, I do want to talk about this because it does kind of pertain to, um, what we do here um because you can follow my social medias there guys tiktok instagram instagram um i gotta keep my eye on this because this does show up in the entertainment side it does uh u.s lawmakers introduced bills to ban tiktok citing risk of china spying on americans well if the u.s bans it canada will probably follow suit guys i i don't have um like uh, a diehard thing about any of these social media platforms, actually, to tell you the truth. Uh, YouTube is the best way to talk with me. It's the best way to interact with me. Uh, um, I guess I should pay attention to Facebook more. I, I rarely do, though. Uh, if, if, if TikTok went bye-bye, I wouldn't lose sleep over it. Because um, <laughs> what is it, really? It's, it's, it's just shorts, right? It's YouTube shorts. And we and I just the way that I get sucked up into watching TikTok videos, I I get sucked up watching YouTube shorts. You know, I just I just sit there on my phone and uh, just just scroll through it, right? Just next, next, and uh, yeah. So if it gets banned, whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no skin off my teeth, or you know, whatever. If it gets banned, I'll just keep my eye on it. It's this goes into a little bit more of the politics and stuff like that. Uh, because TikTok is owned by the Chinese government. Um, they take all your information and stuff like that. That's why I was so late to the TikTok party, but I realized that it was impossible to maybe grow the YouTube channel a little bit. And I think it has a touch, minorly. I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see how all the chips fall. Okay, guys, we're on schedule today, and that's good. That's really good. So I am just going to reboot. Um, well, actually, I'm going to keep that page up. Uh, I'm going to see if I have missed anything in the movie news story realm and, um, uh, see what's on the docket. Cause sometimes I miss a headline out there or so. And, uh, yeah, everybody's going to be talking about the Henry Cavill Superman today. Um, the younger Superman. Yeah. Uh, that's safe. That's safe. Okay. Let's pull up the Twitterverse. See if we missed anything. I'm sure that we're just going to see more, uh, awards coverage stuff on the old Twitterverse. HCA film awards, best cast ensemble. Really Babylon got nominated. <laughs> glass on glass onion, man. Is, that's a great ensemble. I can't wait to watch that with you guys. We will be doing a full live watch along for this, and we're going to have so much fun. This is just a fun movie. Wow. Can't wait to watch it. That's what I would say for ensemble. Best original screenplay. That, that one I would give to uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Actually, Banshee, Banshee's of Inishira was pretty... Oh, Fableman's? Well, that's a tough category. Uh, best Adapted Screenplay. Pinocchio, she said, Glass Onion, 
screenplay, adapted screenplay. What? I thought that was an original screenplay from Ryan Johnson. I don't know. The Whale. Best Director. That's a lot of people. Baz Luhrmann for Elvis. The team from Everything Everywhere All at Once. That's cool. Gina Prince Blythe. I don't know what they did. James Cameron. No. Avatar is going to win a lot of the technical stuff. I don't think it's going to win Best Picture, and I don't think it's going to win Best Director. Martin McDonough for Banshees. Park Chan Wook. SS Rajamuli for RR and R, maybe. Sarah Pauly for Women Talking. Steven Spielberg for The Fablemans. Fablemans was really good. Uh, a Weaver says, by the way, I agree. New Superman will be an unknown. Our glass could be exciting. Um, yeah. Superman will be an unknown actor. Um, uh, but it could, but, but you know what I mean, right? When, when I was pulling up the cast for Vikings there, um, you know what I mean by just, it's hard now not to look at people and say, well, this could be because they're going to be, odds are they probably even know who they want already. I think they do. It's possible they already know who they, they want as the next Superman. All right, best short film. Uh, Taylor Swift, yeah, all, all too well. All right, so I'm not going to read all of these uh, award stuff uh, because it's all over the place with the awards. I just want to see if I missed any big headlines. Um, Austin Butler, Brian Fraser, Paul Dano, Adam Sandler, Bill Nye. That's quite the photograph, hey? That's cool. Dig that. Uh, doesn't really do Paul Dano any justice there. <laughs> uh, it barely even looks like him. Jonathan Majors, though. He's going to be on the map. Because uh, we saw him in uh, Devotion, right? And he's going to be in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. He's going to be in Creed 3. Austin Butler. Elvis, of course. Dune Part 2. Adam Sandler is a staple. Bill Nye, Brendan Fraser, yeah, that's cool. Uh, first poster for Kelly Richards showing up. Michelle Williams, Hong Chao. Okay, showing up. I don't even know what the heck that is. Huh? Coming to theaters. Bill Skarsgård. He's going to be our crow, guys. He's going to be Crow next. Can't wait to see that. That's wrapped all now. So he's going to be Eric Draven next. We just saw him in Barbarian. Darren Aronofsky says, yeah, he's trying to do Black Swan musical. We'll see what happens. I do like Black Swan. I do quite a bit. I think that's maybe my second favorite film. I think out of Aronofsky's work, I still think The Wrestler is right up there, right? The Wrestler. And then maybe Black Swan. Man, yeah, Black Swan is awesome. The trailer for Kelly Richards showing up is out. Okay, so that trailer dropped. Showing up. I don't even know what the heck that's about, but we'll check it out maybe tomorrow on tomorrow's pre-show. We'll check out that trailer. Uh, the Crow can't come soon enough. It will be good to put some ghosts to rest. Yeah, the Crow can't come soon enough, and uh, I want to see something from. The Highlander reboot with Henry Cavill. I want to see something from that. Lily Collins. Where's she? We haven't seen her in a hot minute. Lily Collins. Last thing we saw her was in a Netflix movie that I saw her in. Okay, so some more award stuff. Nothing really dropped there. Fablemans. Yeah, that's, that's Paul Dano and the Fablemans. All right, so just more award stuff. God, it's clouded. We know Lady Gaga starts shooting on Joker 2 in the new year. Till. I guess I need to see Till as well, somewhere along the lines. Banshees have been in Sheeran, Best Actor, Women's Women's Critics' Choice Awards. So it's it's all getting mixed and included, uh, convoluted there. Uh, okay, so I think that's all I wanted to do today. Let me just refresh my... YouTube page to see if any trailers did drop. Guys, it's a 24-hour news cycle. You know how it works. If we don't get it to it today, we'll get it up tomorrow. Uh, 
Wow, early projections are saying half a billion worldwide for Avatar 2. Worldwide? Half a billion? Maybe. Maybe. Okay, so showing up is the only new trailer. Uh, but the Avatar audience scores should be coming in. Okay. Um, I don't know when I'm going to do my spoiler. I'll, I'll, I'll do my normal review tomorrow and tomorrow's show for Avatar. My spoiler-free review. But my uh, straight-out-of-the-theater reaction will be up later tonight for Avatar. And then we'll do a spoiler-free review during the show. And then afterwards. Whew. I don't know. Maybe Saturday. I got to get a spoiler version out there today. Someday, to, sometime tomorrow as well, too. Maybe we'll just all talk about Avatar. If there's no big headlines tomorrow, then we'll, it'll just be an Avatar show. Yeah. Well, we'll play it as it comes. All right, guys. Um, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe. Um, and, uh, yeah, pay attention for um, Peripheral in just over an hour. And the Avatar straight out of the theater reaction later on today. And I'll see you next time on Mirror Domains. Thank you for joining me in the live chat. A Weaver, our glass Vikings, and Derpy. And uh, was Bifer here today? No, Bifer wasn't there. Thank you very much. See you next time on Mirror Domains.